Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. I'm so glad you joined us today. Uh, We've got some really, really cool stuff to talk about today. On the close of yesterday's broadcast, well, in fact, let, let's let's open the broadcast today with with this scripture. I remember we we had uh, we had just gone to Oral Roberts University and um, had just gotten started in school, and uh, we had to go back to Fort Worth, and uh, we were uh, had a meeting there at, at Brother Nichols' church. And so we're staying there at Mother and Dad's uh, home. And I said, Mother, you got any, you, you got any tapes or anything we could be listening to? She said, yeah. Well, back in those days, you know, the, the tape player was about this big, about that high. And a uh, great big old web core. Yeah, I remember it. A tape machine that had seven inch reels like this. And it was the first Kenneth E. Hagen tape I ever heard. You can have what you say yeah. on one side and you can write your own ticket with Ooh, God what a on the other side. Yeah. Well, I turned that on. I'm telling you, I'd never heard that anything like that. That was what we were looking for. And it, it was the very answer to the questions that I had been just holding before God. Got down there uh, close to the end of uh, one of those tapes. And he turned to this scripture in the book of Hebrews. Oh, my chapter one of the book of Hebrews. And he's, he, he stopped a minute. I'm talking about Brother Hagin on this tape. He said, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, I've, I've never had freedom to talk about this, but I'm going to do it. And I, and, and, and I said, yeah, and it's on account of me too. <laughs> I mean, because he's talking right to me. I, I'm telling you, he's talking about the, the authority of the written word of God. And Mark 11, 23, you have what you say and faith. Oh, man. I, I just, I just, it, my spirit just took off. And he got down here to the 13th and 14th verses of uh, Hebrews chapter one, to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Never. He never said that to any angel. No angel sits in the presence of God. They're angels. They, 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 they don't have the authority to sit there. Jesus sits at the right hand of God at God's invitation. And he said, sit on my right hand. Said this to Jesus. Till I make your enemies your footstool. Then the scripture tells us to come boldly mm-hmm. to the throne of grace Praise and find, uh, obtain grace. mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Then say, come bold, then say, come crawl up to the throne of grace. He's actually telling us to come sit with him. The book, the the word says in the book of Ephesians, we've been raised up and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Where? On the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Joint heirs. Joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Are you ready for this? We're ready. (laughs) Are they, talking about the ministering uh, of the angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? Not just to them, for them, who shall be heirs of salvation? Oh, my. 
It hit me so hard. If you remember, Gloria, it hit me so hard. I was on my back on the floor. I, and, and then Brother Hagin went ahead to say, uh, don't you remember in the word where it said that, that our angels are always before the face of God. He said, you have a personal angel. You have angels assigned to you to minister for you. But when you're just talking like the world talks, then that's part of your benefit package. Let's go back over there now to the 103rd Psalm. These are our benefits. Bless the Lord, you his angels, verse 20, that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now, we are the voice of the word of faith in this earth. We are the voice of Jesus. We speak the word of the living God. In his he name. is upholding yeah. all things by the word of his power, and we are his joint heirs. We are the ones in the earth that are supposed to be speaking that upholding word. That's right. Oh, my, my, my. Praise God. And when we do, those angels are ready to go into action and see that the wall is up, that, the, that grace is in place, and to see that nothing touches us, and they lift us up lest we dash our foot Praise against the stone. And they keep us in all of our ways but not when you're going around talking, well, I'll tell you, you scared me to death last night. I just, you know, and I just get so sick and tired and I, and blah, 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 blah. Just saying all that junk, all that curse from the world and all of that, you know, well, I tell you, I'm just damn for doing, damn for don't. I mean, you know, and all that kind of just going on like that all the time. And they're, and they're, they're saying, oh, don't he know? I mean, why, why, does, why does he want to say things like that? Why does he want the flu? He keeps saying he gets the flu every year. Why does he say things like that? Why does he say all the time I have these allergies? Why does he say I have a slow metabolism is why I get fat all the time? Why, why, why does he say things like this all the time? Is that what he wants? Doesn't he know his life is redeemed from destruction? Yes. Sir. No, he doesn't know that. And you've got angels that just have folded wings and they, they're, they're assigned to you. But you, get a, you can get to a place where you frustrate your angels and they'll be withdrawn. Scripture says so. <clears throat> there are certain scriptures that say that's because of the angels. There are angels, there are church angels assigned to that church for revelation knowledge to come into that church. But you, you just keep preaching uh, and denying the power of the gospel and that kind of stuff. Jesus said, I will remove your angel from that church. But when you preach faith, you preach the redemption power of God, you that the redeemed of the Lord say so, praise God, amen. And you're not dependent on the government. You're not dependent on handouts from, from anybody else, banks, nobody else. You stand on the word. You stand on the blessing. In this house, we serve God, hallelujah, and we don't bow our confession to the world, to oh, the man. laws of sin That's and right. death or anything else. We are in the body and the life of Jesus, oh, hallelujah. Man. Praise God. Now, remember, remember Jacob's ladder. <clears throat> Jacob attempted to get the blessing by trickery. See. And he and his mother pulled that devilish stunt try and deceived his dad trying to get the blessing. Well, it didn't work. And, and, and he knew something was wrong with it and he, he 
and, and, but, and God was, was after him and on him because this is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he, he is supposed to be walking in this blessing and it, it's extremely important that this heritage and this line not be broken because this is the covenant line from which Jesus will carry that blessing and then become the curse so that it, it comes, the blessing is put back where it belongs. We see then angels, he, he saw angels coming and going from heaven to the earth on certain particular assignments. But you see, Adam had turned authority over the earth to Satan. Mm -hmm. And at that time, until Jesus dethroned him, he was, he was using Adam's authority to control to steal, kill, and to destroy. And what, the, what had been the blessing became the curse. So now here's this man that is supposed to be in the blessing and, and the devil set up a situation to try to get his hands on it. You don't get blessed from God by lying and stealing. So God is dealing with him. Here's an angel that comes on the scene and man, it got into Jacob so strong. I mean, it, the, the, I, the, I have to have this blessing. I'm supposed to be blessed. I'm, I'm supposed to do this. He grabbed that angel. He said, don't you leave till you bless me. I mean, and it, it, it was so supernatural in him that he was overpowering that angel. So you can, you can, you can see what, what strength this, this blessing had in just this, uh, just this mortal man, not even born again. Nobody got born again until after Jesus was raised from the dead. So he said, you bless me. That's when the blessing of the Lord came into his life. But I wanted you to see the angels on this ladder and this, this particular way of coming and going because that's all they had the authority to do. Then at the birth of Jesus, they, were, they manifested themselves in this natural realm, but they came and they went. But this scripture is talking about after Jesus is raised from the dead, appointed by God as heir of all things, then the ministering angels of God, all of them that were created by God to, to be part of the blessing operation in this earth, they're part of that. That's what they were created to be and to do. They came forth and came back in here. It happened on the day of Pentecost. Hmm. Now, the only way that the prophet of God had to describe what happened on the day of Pentecost, the only way they could describe it was there came a sound. It didn't say it was a rushing mighty wind. It said it sounded like one. It sounded like a tornado. It sounded like a hurricane. It, 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 it was the loudest noise they had ever heard, and they, that's the only thing they could uh, by which they could compare it and oh, describe it rushing as a wind. rushing, a, a, um, well, a, a, a hurricane, a, a, a tempest, mm -hmm. tornado. That's the loudest thing they ever heard. So that's the way they described it. It was not just heard in Jerusalem where they were. It was heard all over the earth. This roar, this enormous sound was the sound of the spirit of the living God and all of those angels, a myriad of angels in one place, they're numbered in the trillions 
Can you imagine over a trillion beings coming into this planet, their wings, their voices, they're, they're shouting the glory of God and they come into this thing all at one time. Ho, 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 ho. Wow. Wow. And they heard it. Man, it was a, it was a happening. They all are still here because Satan is not in charge anymore. He has been dethroned. His That's principalities right. and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in heavenly places have been pulled down and they are subject to our authority in the name of Jesus by the power of the blessing of Abraham that is in us and on us and, and, and the the power forces, angelic beings. The only way that they are superior to us, they are not superior in their creation. They are not superior beings. When the scripture says man was created just a little below the angel, actually the word translated angel there is Elohim, just a little below God. But then man gave himself over to a fallen angel and he fell in authority through high treason to a place under the heel of that fallen angel. And that angel uh, took Adam's place, which is a place he was not created to have, nor should he have had it. But he had a legal right to do it because Adam gave it to it. But Jesus pulled him down and That's took right. his authority away from him. And now the second and the last Adam is enthroned. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the blessing is Amen. in charge. Amen. Glory Doesn't that thrill you? Yes. That shoots a thrill through awesome. me that, that is just beyond my ability to, to express God. it. It is so wonderful. Now, the angels are subject to the church. They know, according to the scripture now, according to the New Testament, you look it up for yourself. They understand and have revealed unto them the manifold wisdom of God through the church. They receive revelation from us. They receive assignment from us. As we hear from God and we speak forth the word, then they go into action. Amen. Amen. They're in our authority. Where they excel is in their their physical being. Right. They, they they don't have flesh and, and blood and bone bodies. They have spiritual bodies. And there they excel in strength. Whoa, they are mighty. Through God. Through God. Yes. For the pulling Amen. down of so strongholds. Now, but they are under our authority. So now, this is vitally important information. As we speak forth the blessing, they go forth, and you need to expect them to do so. They go forth to bring that to pass. Now, don't say things that frustrate them. Don't say things, well, I guess it ain't going to work this time. Either. No, don't say things like that. Stay in the Word of God. Stay in a forgiveness mode. Stay in and walk in love all the time. All, if you have ought against any, forgive when you stand right. praying, Jesus said. Why? Because of the angelic forces, because of the Holy Spirit, because of the Lord Jesus Christ and, 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 and His uh, his assignment in your life. Hallelujah. We are supposed to prosper. We are supposed to be blessed. We are supposed to be strong. We are supposed to go where Heal. other men are afraid to go. We are supposed to take authority over this earth. We are, he is upholding all things by the word of his power. But I say again, we are joint heirs unto yes. him and we are the word in this earth that's supposed to be holding it up. He said, in my name, go. Yes. And speak. Do the works. Glory we are the mouthpiece of mm -hmm. faith. We're supposed to be speaking the words of deliverance and power. We are the body of, of Christ. 
Christ, the anointed Hallelujah. one in his anointing. Yeah. Glory to don't, God. Don't blame the politicians. It's our fault. We're the ones that just sit there and let it happen. Don't blame the school teachers for, for preaching and teaching socialism. We're the one that let it happen. Don't blame them for taking the prayer out of the schools. We're the one that let it happen. Oh, we sit there and grab and fuss at the TV, blah, 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 blah. But, you, but then don't vote. And when you, if you do go vote, you go vote because of the economy or something. Go pray and seek the Lord and find out for whom he says vote. If you don't, you're going to get more of the same. If you don't vote, then you just voted for the wrong one. That's right. I mean, that's just the way it is. Well, I don't like neither one of them. That ain't your business to like either one of them. It is your business to go to God and see what he says do. Amen. Amen. We are manifestation of the word in this earth. Let me go back here now and read to you again. Jesus, Matthew 11, 27 through 30 in the message translation. Jesus resumed talking to the people but now tenderly. The Father, tenderly, he said, the Father has given me all things to do and say. This is a unique father-son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does but I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone who will listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me. You'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I will not lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Praise God. Keep company with me. You will learn to live freely and lightly. Glory <laughs> to God. Hallelujah. No, it's not tough and hard serving God and serving Jesus. It's the easiest thing you ever did in your life if you do it right. He came for you to have life and have it till it overflows in abundance and you've got angels ganged up around you there to help you. There's a wall of separation between you and the curse and yes. the tornadoes come through and you say, not on my house. Yeah, the wall is up around us. My life is redeemed from destruction. Now get out of here in the That's name of right. Jesus. Glory that thing will rise up I've and get it. up. I've seen it. We've done it over and over and over for over 40 years. Glory to God. That tornado that day in the airplane went <laughs> and just went right back up in the sky. Yes, ma'am. Glory to That's God. That's the way those things are supposed to be controlled in the earth That's by right. the body of Christ. That's right. Not just sit there and tell them, oh, Lord, I hope it don't hit us. God went through town last night, Blue destroyed that whole neighborhood. He straightened out them sinners. That's a lie from hell. The storm wasn't from heaven, it's from no, hell. It Satan did it heaven? just the same way he did it to Job. Amen. Preach it, brother, time. preach it. I wish, I wish I had some more time. <laughs> Glory and I'll be right back in oh. just a moment. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.